I said I'm teaching on how to watch with the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. How to watch in prayer with the Lord. And it's going to be a great time. As a new believer, when I got born again, there was one thing that I desired with all of my heart. And that one thing I desired was power. Because I would read in the scriptures that the Lord said to them that believe him, even them that believe on his name, to them he gave them power to become the sons of God. So when I got born again, I desired that power. I wanted the power at all cost. And I learned that I will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon me. And I'm going to be a witness when I receive that power. So I wanted the power of God at all costs. And my disciple told me that the secret to power is in the secret of magnetism. My disciple told me that the more a magnetic substance spent time in the presence of a larger magnet the more that substance gains some of the magnetic properties of the magnet so this young man who was teaching me how to be like Christ told me that if I want to look like Christ I should learn to spend more time in the presence of Christ. And then he related with me how the body of Moses literally began to shine when he came down from the mountain. He told me that Moses had his face shining like the sun because he had spent 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of the Lord. So with these two simple arguments and with the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ himself was a man of prayer, I really believed it that if I could spend more time in the presence of the Lord, I was going to receive power and I was going to be more like Jesus. It's true. But the problem I had was the unanswered questions about prayer. Like one, how long is long enough to tarry in the presence of the Lord? How long is long enough? Hallelujah. And I realized that the question of how long is long enough in the presence of the Lord was subject to what kind of of philosophy or prayer that you intended to pray for instance a man that prays three times a day evening morning and noon may not be able to pray for an hour except he's a full-time minister or except he works for himself because to pray three hours each day, if you are not a full-time minister, may not be possible in the kind of world we live in. I didn't say it is not possible. I said it may not be possible. For many people, it won't be possible. And the Jews pray five times, I don't know, maybe five times a day, like the Muslims, to pray an hour every prayer time will require that you're a full-time prayer warrior like Anna. And then maybe you can pray an hour five times every day. So I realized that um, according to Matthew chapter 26 from verse 36 to 41 
Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us a reasonable standard duration of prayer. Because he left his disciples to pray and he came back and asked them a very simple question. Verse 40, and he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me and I? So from, from that Bible scripture, I sort of came to understand as a young believer that praying one hour is a reasonable duration in the presence of the Lord, which I believe that the Lord believed that any believer who can pray for an hour every day has prayed enough to live a powerful supernatural life. So the standard prayer for every believer is an hour. But you know that many of us do not pray. We don't even pray for 15 minutes a day, let alone to demand the standard one hour of watching with the Lord. And please remember, I'm not talking about the fleshy, mechanical rattling of words. I'm not talking about the carnal, mechanical shouting for an hour. I'm talking about the spiritual faith driven 60 minutes of four eyes with the Lord kind of prayer where you are in the presence of the Lord where your decision is I am waiting with the Lord I am watching with the Lord I'm talking about that kind of prayer that is mixed with visions and dreams Prayer that you enter for 60 minutes and come out and you can tell us what God said. Prayer that is actually a dialogue, not a monologue, a dialogue with God. Prayer that you speak tete a tete with the immortal God. That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. And ideally, it would have been proper to spend 60 solid hours in prayer every day and then other kinds of prayer in the course of the day but for many of us and our status 60 solid hours may not be that easy to do so 60 solid minutes not hours minutes a day should be standard it should be something that every believer should be able to do for maximum results. But many of us, for the kind of shadows we keep and the routines we have had, we may not be able to do 60 solid minutes a day. So then um, you could decide if you are going to pray three times a day, then you could divide your 60 minutes to three twenty minutes are you getting it but if you are breaking it into three twenty minutes then perhaps you have to do three twenty five minutes to make up for the break and it's just like if you go for a loan and you are repaying the loan if you are going to repay the loan in one big chunk perhaps the interest rate is going to be lower than if it's spread over time how many of you get it i don't know how the calculations are so you could do 60 solid or 325 minutes daily or if you want to do five times a day then you can break your one hour to five 12 minutes a day and properly you can break it into five 15 minutes a day but you realize that if you don't own a private office or you don't work from home praying five times a day if you have not been the routine you keep it's going to be difficult because for many of us um, to make time five times during the day is going to be difficult are you getting it so you can do 60 minutes 
maybe if I want to do 60 minutes, can I make a suggestion? You can decide to do 60 minutes with two coffee breaks. What do you think? Or two Milo breaks. Or two tea breaks. That is if you can afford. So you pray the first 20 minutes. Then you sip a cup of Milo. Pray the next 20 minutes. And sip the next cup of Milo. And pray the next 20 minutes. If that's going to work. But you can do 60 minutes of prayer. And because we are starting. I don't want to make it too difficult for you. So let's start. After all, you pray zero minutes. Except you are self food by an auntie you think is a witch. Then now you don't forget to pray. But you don't pray at all. Are you getting it? So how do you pray for 60 minutes every day of your life? Religiously. Just like you do your workout or your walks or your jump up or your sit up or your roll up or whatever app you do just like you do it can you think about doing 60 minutes with the Lord and listen as a young believer I was determined to do three 60 minutes every day as a student so I prayed for three hours every day so what I did was I tried to pray very early before daybreak and then during um, after school when we are closed from classes i try to find an hour in between dining and after siesta to pray then i prayed for an hour after prep which i was not able to pray the after prep one I wasn't able to do it most of the times because after prayer I couldn't go to my place of prayer so I had to do it in my bed when the lights go out and sometimes whilst I'm praying I fall asleep and have a dream and sometimes the devil will appear beside my bed carrying a hammer and he's trying to hit my lips then I wake up then I continue the prayer so you see how many of you have that experience glory to God so I try to pray for three 60 minutes every day as a young believer and i can tell you i did two hours religiously every day and the power was just something else hallelujah so i'm trying to recommend that it's possible to do three hours a day but let us begin to target 60 minutes because that's the standard the lord has given us but if you are a starter you could start with 12 minutes or 30 minutes before you graduate gradually into 60 minutes but you can also believe God to go for 60 minutes and for me I was looking for the proper format of prayer and the proper secret of prayer so there were two books that I found very helpful I don't know whether those books are still alive but I found them very helpful but well you may not even need to read those books they say because my book on prayer would give you some of the elements you are likely to find when you read this book and I have a book on prayer so when you go to simpibediaco.com I have several ebooks or you can also download my app seed for today when you go to Google Play Store there is an app there just download it seed for today it, it has a yellow background with a green burden leaf in it just download that app install it and when you do it gives you access to all of my websites so you will find the simpibedia books there just click on the books and you can download my book on prayer and you can also watch even this particular video there on the app see it for today it's a good app and every morning I have devotionals there so you can also read some of my write-ups and some of the preaching notes that I have. But you can also go directly to simplepediaco.com and then download my book on prayer. And that book is going to be very helpful for you. If you believe that, say a big amen. All right. So somebody spell the simplepediaco.com for us. Hallelujah. And God bless you for spelling it in the comments so that others can also go. Glory to God. Now, two books I found very helpful as a young believer was a book that was written by 
Dick Eastman. Dick Eastman. And the title of that book was The Hour That Changes the World. I found it a very helpful book because at least it gave me a practical format for praying for an hour. Are you getting it? From the Lord's Prayer is an exposition of Matthew chapter 6. The Hour That Changes the World by Dick Eastman was a very powerful book that helped me as a young believer. Then I read another book which was also very powerful by Oswosanda. And the title of that book is uh, Prayer Power Unlimited. It's written by Oswosanda. That's also a very powerful book that I read and then it changed my life. There was a third book I think was written by uh, Gordon Lindsay. Prayer That Moves Mountains. I think written by Gordon Lindsay. That was also a very powerful book that I read. And these are the books on prayer that formed the basis of my prayer life. Hallelujah. Because this man at least gave me a practical format for praying. And I want to encourage you. You want to walk in the same power that you see great men of God walking into form a habit of prayer let prayer become your habit are you getting it so the fourth book you can also read on prayer is my book on prayer aha uh -huh. yeah it is god's solution to life's unnerving problems or whatever i don't know what it but it's a book of prayer when you go to cpvdiaco.com my book is there so you can also read it glory to god but let me make it simple for you now we have answered one question. One of the main questions we have answered is, how long is long enough to watch with the Lord in prayer? And we said that 60 minutes is at least minimum. Hallelujah. So sometimes some of you trying to maintain your weight, they told you that if you can have 30 minutes of bricks walking a day, it is healthy for you. So I'm also saying that if you can have 60 minutes of prayer faith praying spiritual praying every day of your life i'm telling you you are going to be more than i don't know you'll be you'll be on fire everybody say fire if you can have 60 minutes of prayer is a practical recommendation i'm giving you now why is it important why am i saying that watching with the lord in prayer why that particular title why am i saying watching with the lord because it is actually prayer is the ministry of God. Prayer is God's ministry. When you read Romans chapter 8 verse 26, Bible says that sometimes we want to pray. That is the main problem with prayer. But we don't know how we ought to pray and even what to pray about. Romans 8 26. Are you getting it? Likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities, our limitations, or our weakness. So one of the major weaknesses of all humanity, every human being alive, has one major weakness. And that weakness is the ability to know what we should pray for and how to pray it. Almost all men on the face of the earth don't know this. So he said, likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So what the Bible is simply saying that some of the things we're praying about are not even things to be prayed about. But sometimes we don't know even what to pray about and how we ought to. But the Holy Spirit of the Spirit helps us by making intercessions for us. So you see, prayer is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. Prayer is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. One of the signs that you are baptized with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives within you, one of the things that will prove that the Holy Spirit lives within you is your desire and hunger to pray. And anytime you don't feel like praying is a sign that you are losing fellowship 
with the Holy Spirit. This afternoon in my quiet time, I, I learned that one of the first things demons destroy, one of the first things unclean spirits destroy when they enter into the life of someone is to destroy everything that can disturb them. Luke eleven twenty four tells us that unclean spirits want to find rest where they live. They want to find rest. Their aim is to find a place where they can rest. So when they enter into anybody's life, the first thing they destroy are the gadgets of disturbance. And nothing disturbs demons like prayer, worshipping, singing, joy, peace. It, your peace disturbs the peace of devils. Whenever you are singing songs to God, it disturbs devils. When you pray, it disturbs devils. So when demons enter into your life, the first thing they destroy is your prayer life. They try to keep you busy. They try to surround you with friends. They try to interrupt your prayer with, with, with phone calls. Now you think about it. Sometimes you can watch television from morning till 12 midnight. Immediately you try to pray. You begin to find a hundred things you should be doing. How many of you have the same experience? Yeah. Immediately I try to pray. Then I realize that I've not swept my room. Then I sweep. And I don't like sweeping. But any time I try to pray, I begin to love sweeping more than prayer. So I start sweeping. And one day I swept my own room. When I tried to pray again, a voice told me, how about going to sweep your neighbor's room? So I went to knock on Auntie Maggie's room. I said, Auntie Maggie, can I sweep your room for you? I swept Auntie Maggie's room. I tried to pray again. He said, why not go and sweep the other neighbor's room? I went to knock on Sister Sabia's room. Sister Sabia, can I sweep your room for you? So I swept 12 rooms in the house. Demons would rather allow me. <laughs> Please, I just told you a lie. <laughs> But think about it. Demons will allow you to sweep 12 rooms than to pray for 5 minutes. How many of you? Immediately you try to pray. You remember, ah, I wanted to call Sister Ellen. Okay, then place that call. And you talk about, how many of you realize that when you are talking to Sister Ellen and you are speaking for 40 minutes, you don't even see it's 40 minutes. But immediately you begin to pray. You pray for 40 seconds. And you feel like you've been praying for four hours. One day I said I was going to pray. I prayed and prayed and prayed. And I thought I'd be praying for two hours. I went to watch the time. I prayed for one minute, 20 seconds. And it felt like two hours. I just realized, Charlie, some demons have entered. So I decided. So you see, we need to pray. And every man has a weakness to pray. We have a weakness. We just can't pray. Except we are inspired and driven and motivated by the Holy Ghost. That is why Pastor Benny will tell you that when you enter the Holy of Holies in prayer, time flies. You get the point. When you are praying and you get very deep in prayer, you realize that when even the three hours is up, you feel like you have just spent three minutes. But any time you are in the outer court, Three minutes feel like what? Three hours. You know the temple have three main divisions. The outer court, the place of worship and the holy of holies. And usually when you are in the outer court, you are in the realm of flesh. Three minutes feel like three hours. When you enter the holy place, maybe 30 minutes will feel like one hour. But when you enter the holy of holies, the place where you are literally before the throne of grace, and you are speaking to the Lord. Three hours. Feels like three minutes. So that is how you know where you are in prayer. Am I speaking to someone? I just want us to chat. I can give you a lecture. My notes is here. I can read it to you. But prayer is what I'm talking about. It doesn't take a lecture to become a prayer warrior. It takes catching an anointing or a spirit. Listen, may you catch the spirit of prayer. May the Lord pour upon us the spirit of intercession. May the Holy Spirit, who 
has the diction of the heavenlies come to dwell within us to drive out every evil power and to turn us into prayer chains in the mighty name of Jesus may tonight may prayer resound from your sleeping place may heaven's windows be bombarded by your voice in prayer may your voice be heard in heaven and may it shake the foundations of every hell that is holding you bound in the name of Jesus may your prayer begin to deliver results like never before in the mighty name of Jesus and let the church say amen I didn't come to give you any lecture don't look for lecture notes catch a spirit because I want us to enter into a time of prayer so the Holy Spirit helps us to pray so if for nothing at all maybe you should pray always that the Holy Spirit will help you to pray. That could be your number one prayer topic. Uh, so maybe any time you want to pray, you start by singing. <speaking in Spanish> So as you sing that song, keep your fingers on the keys. Glory to God. As you sing that song, may there be a desire and a willingness and a drive to pray. May your senses be awake and in tune with the voice of the Spirit. And may you be able to pray like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the women shout, Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a preacher to someone. Prayer. How many of you know that prayer is also a ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ? It's not just a ministry for the Holy Spirit. It's also a ministry for our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 34. He said, Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercessions for us. So you see, the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. The Holy Spirit has a ministry, and that ministry is an intercessory ministry. And then Christ also has a ministry, and that ministry is also an intercessory ministry. Then Apostle Paul called the church by the Holy Spirit into ministry. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, Apostle Paul said, I wish that first of all, huh? is it in your Bible? I exhort therefore that first of all, First of all, first before anything, if you don't have time at all, spend all your time praying. I mean, don't do anything except you are praying. First, the first thing every man, every woman should do is to supplicate, is to pray, is to intercede and give thanks for all men. That's the first thing. First of all, he didn't say one of the things you should do. The first thing you should do in the morning and the first thing you should do before you sleep is pray. How many of you see? So prayer or intercessory ministry is a ministry of the spirit, is a ministry of Christ, and is the ministry of the church. So if there is anything the church of God should be doing today in the earth, if there is one thing we should be doing today in the earth, today, I'm telling you, one day, somebody was interviewing Dr. Cho. Then the, the great man of God was there and said, if you, what is one thing that you would advise pastors to say, pray. What is the second thing? Pray. What is the third thing? Pray. If you don't have time at all, what do you do? Pray. I mean, Dr. Cho tells us that the secret to church growth is the secret of prayer. 
And you see, prayer is a complete thing because when you pray, even the things you must do which you don't know you must do will be revealed to you. Call upon me and I will show you great and unsearchable things which thou knowest not. So the thing you ought to know which you don't even know when you pray is revealed to you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's very important. So the Holy Spirit has a ministry of prayer. Jesus Christ has a ministry of prayer. And the church has a ministry of prayer which you are part. Now finally to my message. The best part of the message is what I'm going to give you. How do I watch in prayer with the Lord for at least 60 minutes every day? 60 minutes every day. Every 24 hours. Spend 60 minutes praying. How am I, will I be able to do that? You will need, you would need three things. The first one you would need will be um, the first thing you would need is a prayer atmosphere creator a prayer atmosphere creator a prayer atmosphere creator but to make it very simple for you, since you have a smartphone, and that's why you are able to watch this, you need your smartphone for prayer. Or better still, you need a clock, a watch. Does that make sense? Listen, nobody can pray for 60 minutes without a clock except you have been praying for a long time for instance i've been preaching for a long time so most often even without a clock the one hour services we have online i have no clock but i do it within one hour because i've been doing it for some time Tonight, for instance, I know I may go a little beyond that because I've talked about three different messages in one. Are you following it? So by preaching, I can just tell that this is about how many minutes I'm living. So check your time. You realize that. But I don't have a clock. But I've been doing it for some time. So I know that if I say more than this, I will run into an hour. Are you following what I'm preaching? So everybody, especially if you're a starter in prayer, you need a clock. You need a clock. Number two. The number two thing you need is a prayer list. Some of you in the Protestant persuasion have prayer books. But listen, a prayer list is far better than a prayer book. Amen. So get a prayer list. You see, you cannot pray. Some of you say, Pastor, when I pray for a few minutes, then my words are finished. Your words get finished because you don't have a prayer list. It's like going to the grocery shop to go and buy groceries for stew without a list. You will surely forget tomatoes or ginger. So you come and go back again. Ah, you get it. So you must always make a list. That there's one thing I always find fascinating. Um, Brother Sandra, my wife, sometimes she is planning to go to the market. And three days before the day of going to the market or to the shop, she makes a list. I mean, she takes three days to make the list. So there is no way 
she will go and forget ginger. It is three days of meditation and prayer on how to spend the money. Are you, are you following it? So three days of removing, of adding, of purging, of modification and everything. And she knows that once you say it will cost us X dollars and I give the X dollars, nothing will move me to add even 2% to the X dollars. So she takes three days to make a list. From today, may you get a prayer list in the name of Jesus. I'm going to preach it to you. So it's, it's, it's the same if you ask a young lady who's been helping me in my office. If you ask her, anytime they have to go to the market, there is no way I will authorize withdrawal of money except I see the list. Because I know how people can add things we didn't. So you make a list, you bring it to me, I look through it. And sometimes I'll do the normal thing. What is this thing? They will say garlic. I say, what do we need garlic for? <laughs> so I also carry my black pen and I strike out things you have written that you don't need. Are you getting the point? Yeah. Reverend Amar has always been telling me about how his father, anytime he's traveling to his own town, has a book and he has written everybody's name and how much money he will give them. And you can cry blood as long as you wrote your name, George. 200 cities. Nothing will change that value. So they used to call him pen at home. Today, pastor is saying that you can pray for 15, 16 minutes if you put a pen to the prayer. Say amen to that. Many of you are unable to pray for 60 minutes because you don't have a prayer list. And let me tell you something. When you have a prayer list and you have written just um six prayer topics if you have just six prayer topics you wouldn't struggle praying for about 30 minutes and if you are disciplined enough if you have six prayer topics you wouldn't struggle praying for an hour but better still get 12 prayer items on your prayer list so 12 you can't finish the 12 but get a 12 is better than to get six now remember this how many of you realize that if you have 12 items on a list and you pray for one minute for every item it will take you 12 minutes to finish how many of you remember yeah so you are praying just one minute for every item one minute then should i say the next one how many of you realize that if you sang just two songs before praying and you sang each of the songs well two hymns and you sang two hymns very well you are likely to spend about six minutes singing two hymns how many of you realize that yeah okay so now you have Christian worship songs on your phone, isn't it? So decide that every time before you pray, you will play and sing along three songs. So you start. This is your house. Just sing along. Don't be in a rush. And most of the songs are three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Some songs are about six minutes long. So even if you sang just three worship songs, singing along Don Moe or uh, Pastor Ronkinoli or anyone, any of your favorites, I, I don't know who are the modern ones. Once you sang along, you would have spent about nine to ten minutes in worship. And you have 12 prayer topics you are praying a minute for. And that is already, if you sang for eight minutes, you have spent 20 minutes in prayer. Does it make some sense? Okay. If you decided to intersperse every prayer topic with one song, then you, if the song you 
put in the uh, musical interviews lasted for a minute it will take another 12 minutes to finish it so i am coming to pray and my first item on the prayer is that holy spirit i want to pray but i don't feel like praying but i i really know i have to pray and god you know i really know i have to pray but i don't feel like praying i want to watch television god let your holy spirit come upon me yes you are doing good let your holy spirit fill me now spirit divine attend my prayer tell me now and pray my first prayer at him oh spirit divine attend my prayer and make this house thy own I'm pacing up and down in my living room. Oh, come, crispy, breathe, come. Pacing up and down in my living room. Oh, come as the fire to burn down. My sacrifice shall flame. Oh yes, Lord, my God, oh, yeah. let your fire fall and purge, man. And I'm praying, I'm praying. I want the Holy Spirit to fill me, God, so I can pray tonight. Oh yeah, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Listen with all thy grief shall spark. Oh God, speak, speak. How many of you are enjoying the prayer? Come as the Lama to us breathe you. Lora Kashori Mama Santaya, Lobo Rogo Sotemaya, Shema Dariga Tandiri Vima Sataya, the singer, the atmosphere prayer. Creator is creating an atmosphere that I am singing along the prayer. Shaka Tori Mama Santaya. So now I have a CD. I have a file on my phone. And I'm playing the hymn and I'm singing. And I say, Oh God, did you hear what the word just said? Laka Parosi Motaya. Holy Spirit. I feel that power. Shabaragata. And I'm praying and I'm praying. Ishokotoro Mosikataya. Hey, Okay, okay, hold it there. The, the second item on my prayer list is I want to pray for my mother. And Lord, you know that this woman, this I'm coming to pray. Please follow what I'm going to pray right now. God loves it. This kind of prayer is a spiritual prayer. Lord, you know that my mother has really suffered. In taking care of the ten of us, she gave birth to. And, and, and Lord, I want to pray for my mother. And when I remember the song that they used to sing, and that song says, Obata Refrenima, hey, Emilie, hey, Nana Kami, Fresis, Asa, Tiaba, and Tiaba, Marame Rama, Tirus. And when I remember how my mother had to share a bottle of coke among 16 children, then I know that God, if you will not help this woman, she has seen a lot to be broken. And look at us, we are old, and yet we don't have enough to give this woman. Lord, I pray for the woman. Give her a long life. Heal her, oh God. I wish I knew how to sing this song, but Father, you can bless my mother. I'm praying for my mother. I'm praying for my mother. Can somebody learn the art of prayer? This is how I do it. Shabaragatoya. So, 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 be katanda. Lord, I remember the day when my mother wanted to defend me, and my father got angry. And I know that if you don't heal this woman, she's not going to survive it. Kaparabo sekote, Rico Masanta, Rabababa, Yakarabo Sotolo Sima. I'm praying, I'm praying. Do you, do you want me to go to the third item? That's how you pray. So get a prayer list. Pray one prayer. 
Let your atmosphere creator keep playing. Keep playing. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Any song. Oh yes, I'm praying a prayer of thanksgiving right now. I don't have a prayer list. All right, so okay, you will sing that song. But now look at how you can also pray with your atmosphere creator without any song. So I have a playlist, maybe a playlist from YouTube or whatever. I have a playlist. And the first song on my playlist is going to play right now and I'm going to pray. Let's go. So my, my earphones are in my ears and, and, and the atmosphere creator is facing the atmosphere. Oh God, this is my prayer of consecration. I consecrate myself to your call. I consecrate myself to the ministry. When I look at the price you paid, when I look at what you have done, I refuse to go back. I press on to the future. And the journey is difficult. When I feel like giving up, and I remember what you have done, I don't want to go back anymore. No, I would not go back. Oh, yes, Sakara, I will say that I anymore. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I feel like giving up. But when I remember what you did on the cross, I will never go back. I will never go back. God be my helper. Shabaranga Tayarara. So the first track is gone and the second track is going to play so play any track at all any track at all the son of god I'm waiting for track three. Then I pray. Twelve tracks. And I'm praying. Each one is lasting for three minutes. And I pray for 36 minutes. Glory to God. Shabaraga Shabaraba. My life will never be. My life, my life. Oh yes. Yeah, no other volume on my 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 uh, phone for me. Yeah, pray. Oh yes, I see change, I see change, I see change coming to my life, I see change coming to my life, Lord I sustain your presence as I pray, let me see change, let me see change, I don't want to remain the same, Lord let me see change, bring me out of carnality, Shabaragatoya, oh yes, your volume got down a bit, Shabaragata, Shabaragata, I see change, 
I see change. I see change. Oh God, effect a change in my life. In my life. In my life. Paragatoya. Shabaragatoya. Lord, I want to change. I don't want to remain the same. I want to see change. In the name of Jesus. Yekataya. Okay. Have you learned how to pray? That's all. So that's how I pray. I just make a song list that will last for one hour. I put the ear phones in my ears and I pray the lyrics of the songs. And remember, because I'm going to play the lyrics of the songs, I select the correct songs. Are you following me? So, as a young believer, I wake up in the morning and then my song is a song sung by Estanganuche. So I sing this song, Jesus, here I am, Ziraba, Imu. Israel, I'm a 